Hi there, welcome to Camping Secrets, I'm Marky Mark. I'm continuing our little uh, series of videos just explaining the various features and tips and tricks that we've learned about the Mercedes Marco Polo camper van. Today I'm going to talk about the seats, the front seats and the rear seats which turn into a bed. Now I really like the Marco Polo because it's got a sleeping compartment up the top in the pop-up roof which we'll talk about in another video. But also the seats downstairs turn into, they, they fold flat uh, with an electric motor to do that. But when they're flat, they'll take someone of my height, six, I'm six foot three and a half. Uh, that's about one meter and 95. I'm pretty tall and in a lot of camper vans, I can't lie down. But what I love about the Marco Polo and the VW California to be fair, is that you've got two long beds and effectively double beds, so you can actually sleep four tall people if you have to. Anyhow, let's get on with talking about this stuff. Let's dig into this. So how do you turn these front seats around? We call them captain's chairs in a way, uh, and it's quite a useful design. It's all done manually in the Marco Polo with the front seats, um, even tilting the backrest and things like that. It's all done by turning these wheels. And there's a little catch on the front for rotating it in an azimuth angle around. Um, so if I just put on the camera, if we go under the chair here, we can see this little catch here. It's a little switch, a lever. And that enables, once pulled, you to turn the chair. Now you'll see that it then can catch here, so you can't actually rotate it. So what you find with the Marco Polo is you've got to do a bit of backwards and forwards motion uh, to make enough room to be able to turn the chair around. And really you do need the door open to do this. We have tried uh, turning the chair around with the door shut, but it was very tight squeeze and started peeling back the leather in the armrest here in the door. So now we make sure we do open the door. So the procedure is fairly straightforward, if a bit random and iterative. Um, if we lift up this uh, front lever here, this enables backwards and forwards motion of the chair. So we need to pull it forward enough to make room for a rotation of the seat rest. So actually the best way to do this is to bring that seat rest forward and that then gives enough room for the chair to rotate. So again, if we pull this little lever down here for rotation, now there's enough room here and up here to rotate that chair. And then it's stuck. So now we need to go around the other side to pull the lever again. So let's do that. So now we're here with the chair, sort of half turned. And again, we can see this lever and let's just pull it and rotate that chair around. So now if we come into the back of the camper van, you can either have the chair at that sort of angle or you can even turn it more like so. And then you can just pull up the lever and put the chair back. So now it's there. We can put the headrest down and the back, change the angle of the backrest as well. So now if we shut that door, it's not a problem. You can see the chair is around. And it's exactly the same procedure for the driver's seat. Uh, we just bring the chair forward a little bit, adjust the angle of the backrest. And over time you do get used to the procedure. So that gives enough gap here for the, for the chair to rotate, bring it forward a little bit, pull the lever wherever it may be. Yeah, pull that and that enables the chair to rotate back a bit so that it misses the console in the middle and keep rotating. 
now you've cleared the center console, bring that forward to make room at the back, pull the lever again. And then put it back like that. And again, now we can adjust the backrest. Now you've got the steering wheel in the way, so that does limit how much angle you can get. But then of course you can just bring it forward a little bit, adjust the seat back. So now with the front seat, front door shut, and the van shut, So now with the van door shut, we've got both chairs turned around and it's quite a nice little place to sit. So obviously you can sit this way and you can see the rear seat. So we're going to talk about those now. So the rear seats are it's more of a bench really rather than separate seats, but they do have independent control of the backrest angle. You can move the whole unit backwards and forwards within these rails that are in the floor. So have these rails which the seat, the bench is clamped into, but it, by pulling this lever on the side, you can pull. There's a holder here for doing it. You can pull backwards and forwards. It's actually easier to go backwards when you're sat in it like that. Um, now you can remove the seat completely, uh, you can disconnect the electrical connector at the back for the motors and then take the whole seat out if you want to transport something bigger. Um, underneath the chair is a handy drawer which can keep a variety of stuff. We just keep our toiletries and uh, disinfectant and stuff in there. And as I said before, there's this handle here, which you can access through this hole. Here, for moving the whole bench uh, to, to backwards and forwards. In terms of the control panel, each chair has two sets of switches. One is for moving the, the backrest back and forward. So you can hold that one down. You can see that back is going down. And the other one is for bolstering up the cushions. Now I don't really use this that much. It's meant to add air into these bolsters to make your journey uh, more comfortable. I don't really notice much difference. For example, if I turn that, are we seeing any growth in those bolsters? Yeah, maybe imperceptibly. It's gone a bit plumper there. But typically if I'm sleeping, I don't. I want it as flat as possible. And actually I think when you're lower in the bed, right down, it, it takes the air out of those bolsters anyway. Um, what I typically do though, this is real advanced techniques, is to lower both beds at the same time. So that Let's get them to the same height. Now obviously you've got the headrests up there. So it's uh, worth removing those if you're turning it into the bed uh, because it will inter interfere with the parcel shelf at the back which forms part of the bed. So let's have a look at that. So the rear seats in the Marco Polo, obviously electrically powered motors to uh, raise up and down. And they're actually connected here on the side, side uh, utility console next to the fuse box. And um, it's just a simple electrical connection into this panel here from the seat itself. And this is an extendable cord, so... Um, very little danger of snagging it as the chairs are, are pulled backwards and forwards. So we're just back in the back of the Marco Polo now, uh, just to remove these headrests and just show you how it's done. So 
it's fairly straightforward. E each headrest has a little catch here, which holds in the pole of the headrest. And you can just push in this to lift up the headrest. Once it's out, got a nice little storage area here on the back of the seat. Which means the, the seat can lower down to the horizontal position. This would be close to the floor here, but it keeps it out of the way. Because later on we'll have a parcel shelf here which forms part of the bed. Let's just get this one out. And this goes in as well. Job done. So here we've got the parcel shelf. And normally we keep this in, but we were transporting some uh, garden furniture today in the back of the van. So we took out the parcel shelf, sh shoved the uh, rear bench as far forward as possible. And that actually makes quite a large area in the Marco Polo for transporting stuff around. So it's quite a practical vehicle, actually. We do use it every day as our only mode of transport. Anyway, so I'm going to put this parcel shelf in so that we can fully form the bed. So it's actually best to go in at an angle. And that's actually locked in there now. Uh, to get it out, you turn that and lift up. But when you just put it down, it's actually locked. Now underneath here, you can, there's a table typically, but we're using it in the back garden at the moment. And so uh, it's not in. The table goes here. And actually it's a lot lighter to lift when the table's not in. So this uh, parcel shelf is on a ratchet, so you can lift it up and then you use that as if you want to sit up in bed. So let's, uh, let's go and lower the, uh, the rear seats down to form that bed. Okay, so when you want to put the, the seats down into the horizontal position to make that, that double bed, you need to bring the seat forward as far as you can really really close to the end of this uh, kitchen unit. So again, we just pull this handle, grab this, and I just slide along like this. And actually we found that just spraying PTFE or something like that in some silicon spray in those guide rails really helps with moving it backwards and forwards. So now we're gonna push those two buttons to make these that go down flat. So doing both at once probably saves a bit of wear and tear on the motor rather than doing two individually. But don't quote me on that. And there we go, totally flat. Now I just pull the handle and go backwards until it hits the parcel shelf. So now, We've got the, the double bed. I mean, it's not a full double bed, and actually I'll get the tape measure to measure it because uh, I'm interested myself to know the exact dimensions. But with the parcel shelf up, you can actually lie back, read the newspaper or something like that. It's pretty comfortable. And then, of course, we can just lift up that parcel shelf and drop it back down, like so. And then we've got the full bed like this even now my feet are slightly over the edge but i can pretty much lie on it so i'd say it's about six foot three long but i'm going to measure it anyway for completeness now i am missing one little part on the parcel shelf here so i'm going to find that and zip it in Uh, 
Okay, this is a little pillow unit. And it actually has some little recesses uh, in it. And these recesses are to protect the seat belt covers at the top of the seat. So it makes sense to use it. So let's bring the chair forward again. I need to zip this in. It's worth filming this actually just to show the procedure. So this is the pillow unit and it's got a zip down one side to so we can just zip that in along there. Now you can see that these these little recesses which the top of the seatbelt cover pokes into means you're not gonna rip off these. Um, so now I can pull the handle again, push back. And actually, it's fitting snugly in there. So that's the downstairs bed in place. This is just a shot from the rear showing the size of that downstairs bed. I mean, it's, it's a pretty good space, to be honest. And then we can just shut the rear tailgate. What's nice, you can lie in bed and actually have this rear window open. So in a morning, you can be lying in here, open up this rear window and look at your view. So it's quite a nice place to sleep for a night. Okay, I, I'm really interested to know the dimensions of this full bed. As I say, you've got the whole side kitchen unit here, the leisure unit. So that does eat into the space that you've got, but got the tape measure. Let's measure the width. Okay, so it's about 42 inches wide, which is one meter, seven centimeters. And then right to the back window there, it's about two meters right to the back, which is about 79 inches. So that is about six foot nine long. So I'm six foot three and a half. That's why I can sleep in here pretty well, to be honest. Now, of course, with all things electric, there are things that can go wrong. I have heard stories of people burning out the motors because they had something stuck. They carried on trying to lower the backrest and because there was something in the way underneath the chair, they were just going against you know, a solid object and it burnt the motors out. So you don't want to be doing that. But also they can sometimes get out of sync a little bit. You can sometimes get into a bit of trouble where one of the chairs might not actually go flat. You might be in a position like this. And then it's a bit more tricky to sleep comfortably. But what do you do? Well, luckily there is a reset procedure for these chairs, which basically pulls them up to the max height and sort of recalibrates the positioning so that both chairs know that they're in the right place. So if you're stuck in that position, let me show you how to find the reset button. It's not in the most easy location, put it that way. Okay, so I've just lifted up the back seats a little bit, uh, just to, so I've got easy access to film what I'm about to do. Um, but the Marco Polo, down at the bottom right hand area of the rear bench seats, has this little bit of plastic here. And this is actually a little hatch, which can be taken out and it's ostensibly to allow long items to be placed in the Marco Polo along the full length from the back through that hatch along. So if you've got some really long skis or something, you could store them there while you're traveling. 
but it is the location in the later models of the Marco Polo from about 2018 onwards for the reset switch. Now earlier models, 2017 for example, have the reset switch sort of down, down behind here. Uh, it's quite difficult to find it I think. It's a lot easier on here and you can access it through the drawer I believe uh, down to the side but I think the easiest way is just to remove this hatch. So let me show you how to do that. So you just come down here and put your hand behind it and there's actually a metal spring that you pull down and then that comes out. Now if we go under this hatch, aha, reset. So let's press it and see what happens. Just a single press needed. And now the chairs are rising up automatically. So if you get in that position where one chair is not going flat, then this is the thing that you need to do. It raises the chairs right up to the end of their mechanical travel to basically calibrate them together. And now you can just use them as normal with the switches. And they should go down flat to where they should be. Now putting this back in, there's a bit of a pain. Here's the mechanism uh, out of interest. So you put in your hand underneath and you're pulling that down and then the hatch comes off. Putting it back in is simply the reversal of that. So let's just check how I can do it. I think that's it. They're beautiful! Not the easiest to replace. Okay, so what have we seen today? We've seen how to turn the front seats around, uh, which is a bit of jiggery-pokery and a bit of backwards and forwards and making enough space to do it. A bit like a, a Tetris or a jigsaw puzzle, or like those little puzzles where you have to move things around to uh, make space. Uh, then we've looked at the rear bench seat, how to raise and lower it, the bolster mechanism, and then how to reset uh, the seat if, if you've got any problems with it not going flat. Uh, we've looked at the rear parcel shelf and also the electrical connection into the fuse box area. And we haven't gone into how to take the seat out, and that's mainly because I've never done it before. Uh, normally we just push it as far forward as possible and that makes enough room in the back. Um, but I may look into that for a future video. In any case, I hope you found this useful and please like and subscribe to our channel. We are trying to grow it and there'll be plenty more videos like this one in the future uh, about all sorts of camping things, not just the Marco Polo. Anyway, thanks again. Bye.